My name is David Foster. My wife Nolene Magnuson and I travel throughout Australia looking for birds and spectacular scenery to photograph. about to start our fourth attempt to get to Akarula during the last couple of years. We did think it wasn't going to happen because there had been a lot of rain during the last couple of days and the road from Copley to Akarula is virtually the only outback road in South Australia which is open for traffic. Hopefully we're going to make it this time. It turned out that the road was in very good condition. What was all the fuss about? At the small community of Eager Water, we had some delicious wattle seed ice cream. There is a lovely little museum here. After Italawi Gap, we had a good run to Akarula. checked in and then headed to our budget accommodation for lunch and a relaxing afternoon. Lovely morning in Akarula. So good to have arrived here. So, I've said previously we've tried well four times in, since 2001, and then we've made it. We're here. Isn't it good? Warren and Robin walked through the Mawson Valley while we drove to meet them with morning tea at the Pinnacles. We then drove to the Bola Balana waterfall. Everything looked very dry and there was very little water. of the Bola Balana copper mine and its unusual domed copper smelter. Work started here in the 1870s and various companies tried to make a success of the mine before it was finally abandoned in the 1890s.
Each evening, a small amount of food and water is provided for the resident yellow-footed rock wallaby population. There are just over 2,000 of these delightful and elusive animals left in the wild, with the majority of them in outback South Australia. Dinner in the restaurant was delicious. Here we were in the middle of nowhere, dining on first-class food. We stopped at the remains of the small, lively gold mine, also known as the Golden Rule Mine, before moving on to the old Welcome Copper Mine. These are just two of a great number of small mines that exist throughout the Akarula Reserve. From these mines we drove out to Stubbs Waterhole where we had morning tea. Unfortunately, the waterhole was dry. After lunch back at Arkarula, Warren and I went on the ridgetop tour to Silla's Lookout. This track is closed to the public and has to be done as an organised tour. It is a very spectacular but rough drive, mainly along tracks put in during some of the extensive prospecting for uranium and other minerals during and after World War II. It is a bit ironic that these tracks now cater for tourists, while very rich deposits of uranium were found on the large plains to the east of Akarula Reserve. to the dry salt bed of Lake Froome in the distance. The road from Alcarula to Blinman was only open to high clearance four-wheel drive vehicles. Over the years, we have heard many horror stories about the condition of this road, so we were a little apprehensive. It was in very good condition, and we had a relatively fast trip to Blinman and then on to the Angarichina tourist village. Angarichina was built in 1927 as a hostel for returned soldiers suffering from tuberculosis. Our first stop on our northern Flinders Drive was the Great Wall of China, a natural rock dike on top of an escarpment. Our next stop was at the sad ruins of Apiel Linna Station, which was settled in the 1850s by Joseph Wills. He was in constant legal disputes with his neighbours over boundary lines and with a copper mining company that started a small mine on the property. He ended up in jail in Adelaide on several occasions and died a broken and bankrupt man. Huck's Lookout provides wonderful views of Wilpena Town and is easily accessible on main roads. It is a lovely drive through the National Park to Bunyaroo Valley. The view from Razorback Lookout to the Hyson Range and Wilpena Pound is one of the most spectacular in the area. We stopped for lunch at Twin Gums Lookout. Again, great views to Wilpena Pound. The renowned landscape painter, Sir Hans Heysen, regularly stopped here to paint. 
Hyson regularly stayed with the Pumper family. There is a lovely campground here. It has the rare advantage in this dry country of having a good supply of drinkable spring water. Not far from Angarichina, where we were staying, is a pleasant free campground in Parachil in the Rouge. Lovely scenery and beautiful river red gum trees. In its heyday, Blinman had a population of around 700 people. Now, fewer than 20 people live here permanently. The rich copper mine is now a tourist attraction, and in reality the town exists just to cater for the passing tourist trade. We stopped in Blinman several times on our travels to buy freshly baked bread and have coffee at the bakery. People of a certain age will recognise the kerosene tins that were used on the walls of the kitchen of the restored miners' cottage. I haven't got my little glass of water, so I can't, can't do too much. We stopped for a delicious lunch of kangaroo burgers at Wadna Aboriginal Gallery a few kilometres from Blinman. It was time to head towards home. On the way we stopped at the dramatic ruins of Kanyaka Homestead. Kanyaka was originally settled by Hugh Proby, the third son of the Irish Earl of Carisfield. It is rather ironic and tragic that in such dry and arid country, Hugh Proby drowned whilst trying to rescue cattle from raging floodwaters in Wallachra Creek. By the late 1880s, Kanyaka started to grow under the control of John Randall Phillips. At its peak, over 70 families lived here and was one of the largest stations in the Flinders Ranges. Overgrazing and severe droughts led to large sheep losses and the property was abandoned. We just stopped at Proby's grave. We're on our way back home to Adelaide after 10 days in the Flinders and the Darkarula. We've had a fantastic time. It's been a great trip. I've really enjoyed it and I think all the others have too.